this section of the lecture we learn data types when you write a program we we have to define what we call it as variables constant with different data types so in case you want to solve problems we need to understand how to define those data types different types and how to use them in our programs so let me remind what we learned so far we learned how to use basic symbols of flowcharts to develop or express our algorithms to solve solve set of problems we have different problems to solve that we, we that's why we, that's what we're going to learn in this course problem solving so in order to solve those problems we have to develop algorithms so flowcharts are the simple tools which we can express those algorithms or we can illustrate those algorithms by using six symbols displayed here we discuss how to express or how to illustrate simple algorithm to solve different problems so as you remember first problem we solve is just printing our name on the screen so i demonstrated to you how to do it using scratch simple visual programming language here in this course we use c to learn problem solving since i would like to use gcc for that i demonstrated you how to create a docker image of gcc so some of you may have windows computers so then you may not have gcc installed so it's better you use gcc to learn, follow this course so i have created a simple docker file using the, this docker file you can install docker in your computer and then build that docker image and then you can run this docker image so you you may automatically get the gcc compiler and the prompt so it's basic gcc compiler you can get access to the basic gcc compiler to learn programming so the first problem we solve how to print the name so the flowchart for that is start the program print your name that is output and stop so this program has output only one process so that is output so we learn how to do it in scratch and if you want to do the same thing in c so that is how you want to do c do that in c so i introduced a very basic c program so the c program starts with including what we call it as libraries c has thousands of libraries which we developed or different programmers from history now develop for various activities we could use to, we could use those libraries in our program so the in the methods or the functions we will learn what is functions in later on included on those libraries defined in a file called header files so at the beginning of the C program, we start with this hash mark and say include and need to give what we call it as header file name. stdio.h refers to standard input output library. Header file. So we say in this line, we say we would like to use a standard input output library 
in this program. C program starts with a function called main. Main is mandatory in any C program. So it is the starting point of the program. So here we say int, that means after executing this function or the method called main, it returns a value, integer value. So in, within the program at the end of each function, we must tell what it's going to return. So for example, in the main, we say return zero, it's returning an integer. So here we define what type of the data is going to return. So the, this simple program has only one function called as printf. That function is implemented in a library called standard input output or stdio. So this printf library within the bracket we say we want to print the name. So that's what we want to do, only thing we want to do. So this is how simple C programs look like. As I mentioned, in this C program, I'm using a function called printf. So that fun function defined in a library called standard input output library so at the beginning of the program, we included the definition of these libraries using a header file called stdio.h. Any C program start execution from the main method. Begin and end of this main method marked by the curly brackets. So usually curly brackets represent the begin and end of the function. So this program has one function called main. Main is a mandatory function in each of the program. Printf basically displays output. It is a standard output to the terminal. We could use printf in different, different ways to display the strings, numbers, different values, decimal variables, and so on. So we will learn when we move on. In C programming, at the end of each statement, so we need to put a semicolon. Semicolon is used to mark the end of the statement. So, so after printf, you you see you you might see, or you and you you saw that we have we have a semicolon. At the end of any function, like the last statement of the function is usually written. So with that, we can return a value. So return is not mandatory, but as a good programmer, we should always use return at the end of the function. And then we have to give which value to return. So here, return zero means returning integer zero after execution of the main method. The other thing you should remember when you use C in pro problem solving is the, that mainly C is a case sensitive programming language because some of the programming language, you should understand some of the programming languages, uh, fundamental languages which you use are not case sensitive, but C is case sensitive. That means if you define something with capital A is different with the simple A. So when you see there are some, some good programming practices, how to use those names and how to use capital and simple letters. So when we move on, we will learn those rules of or good, good practices. So in C, there are a set of words which are reserved by the language itself. So those words we cannot use in our programs as variables or the constants. So they, these words we call it as keywords. These keywords define different data types, different 
uh, programming, basic programming commands, and so on. So those keywords, sometimes we you call it as reserve words. So for example, so here we define a variable called money. The type of that variable is integer. So it write as int. Int is the keyword. So basically keywords, we use simple letters. So these are the reserve words or the keywords of C. All reserve words, they use lowercase or simple English letters. So like auto, constant, double, float, switch, size of register, go to, uh, for, else, if, those are the keywords. Actually, you might see you might understood C has limited set of keywords. All the rest of the actions or rest of the tools or rest of the commands which we have developed as functions, user defined functions. So printf is not a keyword, it is a function defined by a user, but defined by a previous programmer actually by using those keywords. Main is again a function, not a keyword. So when you want to use data in our programming language, we have to create what we call it as variables. For example, here we are creating a variable called integer. The name of this variable, call it as identifiers. So int, int is the type of this variable. Money is the name of this variable. So those names call it as identifiers. These identifiers must be unique within the function or within the program. When you define identifiers, later on you may learn scope of this identifier. So maybe, so there might be identifier within your function or maybe identifier which can access in between the functions and so on. So here in this example, we have two variables we define. First one is integer type. Second one call it as double, type double. Double used to store real numbers or the floating point numbers. So this double, variable name is account balance. Integer variable name is money. Money or account balance, we call it as identifiers. Usually when you write identifiers, we can start it with the uppercase or lowercase letters, big is or underscore. So, so basically we start writing identifier using lowercase letters. So first letter of the identifier should be either underscore or any letter like digits or lowercase letter or uppercase letter. Maximum size of the identifier is usually 31 characters. We can have any length, but the con compiler only consider 31 characters. But we should not use very long names as identifiers. So then it's difficult to type as well as difficult to read our programs if you use such long things. Okay, in basic programs, so we can see two types of data storage. So when you want to store the data. So the first basic type, we call it as variables. Other type, what we call it as constants. And the variables can have multiple values. So those values can be changed within the program. So it's, so it's variables look like a box. So any item which fit into that box, we can put it into the box. 
the constant is a closed box. So when you define a constant, we put a fixed value there. After that, we cannot change it within the program. But variable can be changed. But the, based on the box size, you understood the, the item we can put it in will change. Similarly, when you define those variables or the constant, we have to tell the system type of those data. As I mentioned, the very fundamental method of storing the data in our program are variables. So variables is a storage to hold the data. So data can be in different types, like numbers, characters, and so on. So for example, here we define a variable, the name of the variable or identify of the variable, call it as place score, and the type of it is integer. 95 is the value. So when you define the variable, we can give it an initial value. It is a best practice. We must give a initial value at the initial value when you define the variable. So otherwise, C might take random value when you define uh, when you define those uh, variables. So initially, when you define a variable, we should get the type of the variable and the name of the variable. And this mark in the programming call it as assignment mark. So this value is assigned to this variable. So that means 95 put it into this memory storage. So since it is a variable within the program, we can give different values to those this variable. So the value we given will be stored in this variable. So there are basic rules programmers must follow when we define or when you name variables. So variable names are in general call it as identifiers. As I mentioned, we can store them, we can start them in uppercase or lowercase letters or under, underscore signs. C is a strongly typed language. What this means is that type of the variable cannot be changed. That's why we call it as strongly typed variable. The value of the variable can be changed. So that means during the program, we can assign different values to that variable, but the type of the variable that cannot be changed after defined. Now let's have a constant or literals. Constants are the fixed things, fixed storage areas. When you define a constant, we, we should give the type as well. So we put constant, const keyword, and then we put type keyword, and we give a name for that constant. So here we define a constant called pipe. Type of that is double, that is decimal numbers, and we say it's a constant. In, in previously, if I go back, so we say here int and the name. So there are no, nothing in front of the type. But here, when you define a constant, we must say before the type, we must say it's a constant. Constant, type, and the value, sorry, type and the name of that constant. That is called constant identifier. And after that, we can give a value to the constant that cannot be changed throughout the program. 
So for example, we assign 3.14 to the constant called phi. So it's fixed constant type plus constant value cannot change. That is what it call it as constant. So we discuss variable types. So, but we did not introduce those types yet. See how different variable types available or what you call it data types. So the correct name is data types. So those data types are called as fundamental, can divide it into the fundamental data types and derived data types. So basic fundamental data types are integers, floating point numbers and characters. So based on those types, C has derived data types. So they call it as arrays, pointers, structures, enumerals, and so on. So we will learn those when you move on. Let's learn basic types now. So those basic types are integers and floating point numbers and characters. So most of the first one is integers. Basically, integers stores numbers, positive or negative numbers, whole numbers. Integers are whole numbers that can have both positive and negative values. That means they don't have decimal values. We cannot use decimal values in integer types. So for example, here we define a variable for ID of the integer type. So they are whole numbers. So here we define two variables called ID and age, both are integers. So when you say integer to the compiler, so based on the computer hardware, they create a storage with different sizes. So basically, modern computers, when you define an integer variable, the computer create four byte memory location, or computer allocate, allocate four byte memory location to store those integer values. Since size of this storage is four byte, there is a maximum and minimum value which can be stored in this place. So basically, we have to store negative and positive number both because of that. So we could have, if it is four bytes, maximum bits we can have two to the power 32 bits. Four bytes mean 32 bits. So two to the power 32 distinct states representation, we can get it in this storage. So using those, we can store minus two to the power 31 2, 2 to the power 31 minus 1 positive number. So this quality has the range. So this is the minimum number we can store in this and that is the maximum number we can store in this. So, so for example, if this is number, smaller number than this, this is not run correctly because this is a number where, <clears throat> where we cannot store in this. So if you try to assign a number to the variable which cannot hold that, so it's automatically drop some part of the number. So we may not get the correct answer or correct calculation. Because of that, when you define variables, you must first design what would be the maximum and minimum values we might get it in this program or in, in or else we have to decide what would be the maximum or minimum values which we have to store in this storage. So based on that, we have to decide type. Let's say we want to store floating point numbers. If we want to store floating point numbers or the decimal number, we have two types of variables available, but you call it as float and the double. So 
using float, here you see we can define a variable called account balance and double we can create a variable called book price. So then, so those two variables, account balance and book price might have decimal values. So for example here, normalized factor, we define a variable called normalized factor, so which holds this value, this value. So we can assign it in the exponential format, or we can assign the values to this floating point variables using decimal formats like 2.34. So the difference between float and double is the size, mainly the size. The float usually four bytes long and the double is usually eight bytes long. So then we can have, get more precision when you use double than float. So if you want to have like uh, scientific calculations which are more accurate Okay, values, so better to use double. If you just want some decimal numbers and you are not concerned about the accuracy, so you can use float. So in case we want to store some names, so we are using a variable called characters. So the characters can store one letter. So we have to give this letter within inverted commas. So for example, here is the character variable called test, we store the letter H. So size of this character is one byte. So the computer allocate one byte when you define the variable called character. In addition to this, so C has other basic data types. So we only learn integer, floating point numbers, double and characters, but it has some keyword called unsigned. So for example, we can put unsigned in front of integer and define a variable called unsigned int. So then it only can store positive numbers. So we can have then kind of a uh, variable called short and variable called byte. So using those types actually, we could change the storage types. The other thing we must learn at the very beginning, so when you write a program, so you have to, your program should have readability. That means someone else, not only you, have a look on this program, should understand what it is. So in order to increase the readability, programmer must follow two things. First one is writing comments. The other one is indentations. So we will learn indentation and how later on comments let's discuss a little bit so comments means we describes a program in the source code itself when you put those comments the compiler may not take these lines into consideration while it compiles the code so the c use slash slash symbol to have a single line comment so if your comment is in one line, so we use slash slash and write that. So then it may not get compiled. So it is just for the information. So if, if you want to write multiple line comments, we have to start it with slash star and close it with star slash. So whatever we type in between, compiler may not compile it consider the data or whatever we type in between as comments or the description of your program. So 
From the beginning, as a good programmer, you must learn how to put those comments. Okay, now let's try to uh, do several things uh, uh, to understand what I discuss in this session. So I'll take the command from and I start my uh, start my uh, kind of uh, Docker image. Uh, so, so since I run the Docker image in the previous time, I don't need to run it back. Instead of I can type Docker start option AI minus AI and the image name PCC, it will start my Docker image, virtual image, which has the GCC compiler. So I mounted my local programming directory as my home is mounted to the my programming directory. So I then goes to the uh, directory called for ERP sector one there I store my programs. So you can have like similar directory structure where you want to store your program. So, as you remember, I used in the last week, I wrote a program called IGOC. So, using the VI editor, let me open this program. So, you see, it's include the library main printer. If you want to print your name on the screen instead of IGOC, I can type my name like here so then slash and says after print it go to the next slide so we will discuss printer function in detail later on so i save and exit this program it's called wq write and quit and then i compile it using gcc it will create a file called a.out that is executable file. I put a dot out will execute the program. So you see my name is there. So similarly, if I want to, let's say I want to define the variable in this same program, I take this program back. I can define the integer variable, let's say integer x has value 5. So now I want to print that on the terminal. What I have to do is I have to type like that. So I say print text and after that I need to tell which type of variable I am going to print. So for that I using what we call formatting string. So there I say percentage mark T that says I am going to print a variable integer on the terminal. And after that string here, we put comma, comma, and the next, that is a variable name. When I put that, it print on the terminal, not the X. It print of the terminal value of X the x is a variable, value is 5. So now it should be 5 on the screen. So I compile this program back after save it, and then I run it. So you see, I got 5. So similarly, I can define different variables and print them using printf. This printf command is output command. So if you want to read something from the terminal, then we have to use C inputs. And then printf is the output. Input function we use is called scanf. Using scanf function, we can input the data to a C program. And using printf function, we can print the data to the terminal. Okay, so. So we will discuss this input output further in the next 
session.